Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, second video of today, and I wanted to show you um, my, what I like to refer to as a Rolls Royce of uh, M1 helmets. Um, this is one of my favorite M1 helmets, this is the one that I take um, around with me, especially when I go do reenactments like Vietnam. Um, it's not uh, uncommon uh, to see something like this as far as Vietnam goes, especially along with some of the, the special forces and stuff like that, uh, as well as a uh, couple of the um, military advisors from other countries uh, getting custom-made stuff like this. Uh, there's The M1 is one of the helmets with the most variations out there because uh, it was one of the most widely used steel helmets in existence, uh, much like the Pazgat is for the Kevlar era after it. There's so many different configurations for this helmet, and what I have for you is probably one of my favorite configurations, and this uh, helmet has taken me forever to put together, just like my Rolls-Royce Pazgat has. And the M1 is one of my favorite steel helmets, just like the Pazgat's my, one of my favorite Kevlar helmets, and I couldn't really like one without the other because they're so similar. Uh, but what we have here for you is uh, my Rolls-Royce uh, M1 steel pot helmet. Uh, it is a, uh, for one, it has the, uh, what a lot of uh, US collectors tell me is the OD um, number seven uh, early Vietnam cover on it. Um, it's very, very similar to that. It's actually a Canadian mass green cover. It's a little bit lighter than the US one. Um, and a lot of the US ones will not have the, uh, the foliage loops in them. Uh, you can find the US number seven ones with foliage loops, but a lot of them will not have the foliage loops. Um, has just your standard OD uh, cat eye band in it. Um, nothing special. Uh, it does, if you do take a look at it from the front, it does have to be off center though, and we'll get into why uh, now actually, uh, because of how the bales are set up. Now you see the bales here. This is a triple bale M1. Um, this M1 also happens to have a uh, impact liner in it. Um, to help with the blunt force trauma protection that the M1 was not very good with. Uh, it has the vertical orientated Kevlar uh, liner. Um, it has uh, a Mark VI helmet uh, chin strap on it, um, which uh, has quick release right here. has uh, the leather chin cup. It is a cotton uh, sweatband. Um, I mean cotton uh, construction here, and then it has a leather chin cup. Uh, it does have the pretty rare uh, M1 uh, nape uh, pad for parachutists, uh, which uh, was issued with infantry liners uh, like this, uh, not with paratrooper liners, because, um, well, you can find it with paratrooper liners. There's not really anything stopping you, but this uh, doesn't need a paratrooper liner because it does have a triple bailed uh, shell. So this uh, works well with the regular infantry liner and uh, this is to keep uh, the back of the helmet and these bales and stuff like that uh, from biting into your neck and uh, upper spine uh, f when you uh, take a hit or when your head snaps back, uh, which is pretty common during landing with this much weight on your head. Uh, this has the Riddell, uh, the Riddell quick uh, removable snap-in liner, uh, as you can see here. Uh, there's uh, me just removing the liner, just that simple. Uh, there's These are still pretty common. has the uh, leather sweatband uh, with uh, the metal clasps. Uh, this will accept a Velcro um, style Pazgat one though as well because uh, they're basically the same liner. Uh, it does have the nape uh, support there, uh, which is how the uh, liner pad is attached. There's one little cut uh, right up here. Um, if I can see it there, uh, if you might be able to see, you probably can't see it because it's behind here, but there's one little cut there that the uh, strap goes through, as you can see right there. Um, and what it does is it basically just keeps the he helmet from uh, snapping back onto your uh, spine because it's a lot easier for the back of the helmet to hit your neck uh, than the front of the helmet to hit your neck because uh, the front of the helmet will have your whole face and chin and everything to stop it from impacting the rest of your body, hopefully. Um, and the back of the helmet, not so much. It's a lot easier, especially when you're going prone and everything like that, for this helmet to uh, dig into you because of the bale uh, right here in the back that uh, sticks down a little bit further than the shell. So this is just to help uh, remedy that. 
Now, this helmet wasn't actually uh, formally used by anyone. All these parts in it are brand new. Um, but you can see uh, different versions of all this stuff used by various countries that fielded this helmet. This is probably as nice as uh, the M1 helmet gets, though. As far as comfortability goes, usability and everything like that, uh, support, uh, and protection. Um, it's still not going to stop a bullet. Um, chances are, if you get shot uh, by most rifle caliber rounds or larger caliber pistol rounds, it'll go right through this and scramble your brain still. Um, but this is going to offer you a little bit more stability and a little bit more uh, bump protection than the standard M1 helmet is basically how this is fig uh, configured to give you as uh, much as I, uh, much as you can um, while still maintaining a relatively um, decent weight on the M1 helmet. So all this stuff is uh, basically sourced from 70s and 80s era uh, products. Uh, there isn't really anything in this helmet made uh, after the uh, after the late 80s. So hopefully you uh, like this video. You subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Um, a lot of these parts you really can't find anymore. Uh, super super glad to have this helmet. It gets a lot of looks when I take it out because a lot of very few people have ever seen an M1 helmet that's this strange or out there and everything like that. Uh, super, super glad to have this. Um, I'll probably do a video on my PASGAT helmet later. Uh, I'm doing these videos pretty well spaced out because I have track lights which give off uh, uh, above us there which are a ton of heat, uh, give off a ton of heat and it is currently 90 degrees outside and like 80% humidity so uh, I'm running the air conditioner to kind of get the heat down to where I'm not just sweating buckets while I'm making these videos. Uh, because these lights being on just for the over the course of this like six to ten minute video is enough to raise the uh, temperature of my apartment uh, a good 15 to 20 degrees. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, hopefully you guys like this sort of thing. Um, please uh, leave comments or suggestions uh, if you're looking for stuff like this. Um, you really can't find it anymore. Uh, if you want to know what any specific part of this is or anything like that or as far as where I got it, I could give you that information, but that doesn't mean it's going to be there uh, if you go looking for one. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you like this M1 helmet. It is probably as nice as an M1 helmet can possibly get. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.